everybody, it's Scott from Comic Book Hangover. It's the day after New Comic Book Day, and I thought I would try something new. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, kind of go over the books that I picked up yesterday and uh, give my opinions on them. I was actually able to read all of my uh, all of my new release books uh, yesterday. It's the first time in a long time I've been able to do that, and I'd like to get back into it. And I'm hoping that this will be something that I could do that will encourage that. So some of these books I actually haven't read, though. Um, some are reprints. Uh, one series is, a, is one that I'm a little behind on, but the bulk of them I've read, and I've read enough that I can give opinions on. So, starting off, um, I do want to explain that these are books that are hanging on my wall. I've got these, um, these little pocket things, um, that, uh, that I do, uh, have on my wall, and I'm going to use those to sort of display my books as I get them out, and I think it also makes it easier to do this sort of thing. So, uh, without further ado, let's start this up. I don't want to be here all day. Uh, so the first book I got is a reprint. It is from Alterna Comics, uh, currently my favorite publisher, the most uh, fan-friendly and respectful uh, publisher that's on the in the market today. Uh, this series here is uh, ICYMI. It means in case you missed it. It is a reprint series of some of the stuff that they had done back in 2017. It's all ages stuff, so these are books that you can definitely read with your kids and... and uh, you know, pick them up and give them to your kids because the best part is, is, look at that, look at that price. That is not a typo, that is not a joke, and it's not an imaginary cover. It is a 99 cent comic book. It is a full comic, it's not a partial one. These are uh, done on newsprint, that's uh, one of the reasons why it's a little bit cheaper. They're regular books, range in price from $1.50 to $1.99 is their most expensive series. This one here is uh, Adam Reck. It's the first, uh, reprints the first issue of a three-issue miniseries that fit, focuses on this boy, Adam Reck. Him and his parents are in space. Uh, a series of events happen, and he ends up being separated from his parents and has to go on to uh, has to go on this adventure to basically... He's basically discovering who he is as well as trying to rescue his parents. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the one thing that it really stuck out in my mind on this one was the coloring. The, the way it's colored inside the book is actually the same way you see it on the cover. Where it's very minimal, um, minimal use of cover, color rather, and it really works. I mean, I was very, very impressed with this book, and I honestly, I would love to see uh, more Adam Reck done in this style. Uh, the uh, the creative team on this one did a really great job. Uh, moving on, first Marvel is uh, a Marvel effects simile edition of Incredible Hulk number one eighty one. Uh, officially known as the first appearance of Wolverine. I know there's people out there that say, well, this book had a, uh, a, a an advertisement that showed Wolverine that debuted this, so that's the first appearance. I'm not one of the people that subscribes to the theory that previews and advertisements count as appearances for characters. Uh, so, to me, this is the first appearance. It's a book that I would never be able to afford to get. So I do appreciate the facsimile edition reprint line. Uh, what the facsimile edition is... It is quite simply, it's a page per page reprint of a classic Marvel comic, all the way down to all the advertisements that were in there. So you can go back and you can look at advertisements from back in the day. Um, I wouldn't send those uh, those coupons in that they would have in these books because chances are you won't get anything. But uh, they're using uh, modern day color techniques, but uh, using all the stuff that the book had originally. So these are these are a lot of fun. These are the True Believers series. I think are some of the best things that Marvel uh, is doing today. Uh, moving on is Invader Zim number 41. This is a series that I'm really behind on. I don't always get around to reading it. It's not really a priority book, but it is a book that when I do read it, I, I always enjoy it. It's such a great series. I'm really surprised that it's still going. This is issue 41. I, I did not expect this series to last this long, but I'm, I'm glad it did. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It, if you're a fan of the series, this is definitely something that you would want to have to continue uh, enjoying these characters. Um... The second Marvel title. I think this is the second of three that I actually got this week. I don't buy a lot of Marvel anymore because I'm kind of kind of tired with how they they do things, um, the way that they allow their their talent to uh, treat uh, people online. But that's another topic for another day. And this is about comic books. So this is Marvel Comics presents, uh, covered by Art Adams, and uh, features three different stories. This one, of course, featuring Wolverine, Spider Man, and Captain America. Uh, it's, it's Marvel Comics Presents. If you're familiar with the old series, this is exactly uh, what we, people like me, rather, wanted uh, when we would talk about bringing back this series. It gives you a selection of characters. Uh, I kind of hope that they uh, do sort of use this to uh, bring in new talent, give them a chance to try some of these iconic characters, 
Uh, they don't, these stories don't necessarily always have to be in continuity, if that even exists in Marvel anymore, but uh, this, this, is a, this is a great series. It's a lot of fun. Uh, there are some of the stuff, like the Captain America story, is a bit more political than what I want. I'm, I'm one of the people, I don't want politics in my comics, I just want fun. But this is definitely a series that uh, you can check out. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's very, uh, compared to a lot of stuff that Marvel's doing today, it's, it's really light. A lot of fun, I do recommend. Uh, next up, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, number 37. Again, another series that I'm surprised is still going. Um, and I, I really honestly got real close to dropping this one after the Shattered Grid story. I really loved the series up to that point. Shattered Grid was an amazing series. I was concerned about where do you go from here? I mean, this is something major. Uh, they brought in a new uh, writer, a new artist, a new creative team. Uh, this uh, Marguerite Bennett, she... She's doing the. I think she's honestly doing the best job she can, considering uh, what she's coming into. Uh, the problem is, is, is she's focusing on characters that, like me personally, I don't care for really any of these characters. Um, I, I, I know, I'm not really familiar with them, and taking them away from the Power Rangers universe as we know it, and setting them in, in a completely different area with no connections to anything familiar. I just, I, I, to me, it's not what I wanted. But I do understand that starting with issue 40, we're going to start another new storyline that features the White Ranger. So I'm going to stick it out. I am going to still read them. It is fun for the most part. It's just not what I would, not what I expect from uh, a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers comic book. But you know, if, you, if you want something a little bit different, especially with a, uh, a Power Rangers book that mixes it up quite a bit. I mean, these are, these are uh, characters from various teams uh, throughout the Power Rangers uh, line of shows. So if you're looking for something like that, this is probably the the, uh, the story you want. This is uh, Beyond the Grid. Um, covers are nice, nice, though. I really enjoyed those. Uh, next up, Sharky number two uh, from Image. I don't really read a lot of Image or Dark Horse, but uh, this one, uh, I picked up the first issue. It was recommended by uh, a good friend of mine, Cody Lockwood of Lockwood's Loot. And it's uh, one of my favorite characters of all time is the DC bounty hunter Lobo. And he, in his review, he had mentioned, and he told me, you know, uh, when we were down at the uh, comic shop, uh, that this character, you know, was a lot like DC's Lobo. When Lobo was allowed to be crass and crude and mean and and fun. So I picked up the first issue, and yeah, there's a lot of Lobo in this character, and it was very entertaining. So I figured, well, I'll check out the second issue and uh, see where I go from there. And the second issue was just as much fun. So, um the uh, the art on this one, this is an artist that I'm familiar with from a Thor series uh, a few years back. And I really didn't like the art on that Thor book, but I really am enjoying the art on this series. It, it works for this style of storytelling. And uh, Mark Millar, I didn't think he had something like this in him. But yeah, it's, it's this is really good. Very entertaining. If you're a fan of Lobo and you're looking for something um, where, you know, Lobo, I mean, he has, he has a kid that he's dealing with in this one, but... He's quite mean to the child, and uh, it's it's very entertaining. I, I, I do recommend. Uh, the last Marvel book that I grabbed this week was Superior Spider-Man number four. And uh, I I was a huge fan, and still am a huge fan, of Dan Slott's uh, Superior Spider-Man series. Uh, in, in my opinion, that was basically the, the end of his amazing run on Spider-Man. After that, the series just kind of fell apart for me, and his... Um, there, there's things outside of that that kind of um, uh, made me lose interest in the in him and his writing and uh, Spider-Man in general. But Superior Spider-Man was a great series back then, uh, and I heard that they were bringing him back. At the time, I had dropped all my Marvel books, but I do have a, a special place in my heart for this specific iteration of Spider-Man. And I saw Christos Gage was writing it. He does some really good Spider-Man stuff, and I figured I'd give it a shot. Why not? What's the worst that could happen? You know, buy an issue or two, not like it, move on. Not a big deal. Um, I'm really enjoying it, and this was my uh, my make it or break it issue. And after reading this one, I I, I think I am going to add this to my pull list officially. So it'll be the first um, Marvel title since last April that will be on my pull list. And uh, honestly, I think we're going to be adding Marvel Comics Presents to it as well. Uh, because these are these are books that uh, they kind of feel like classic Marvel comics, uh, the way things used to be when uh, it was about the comics and not about uh, personal stuff. So, uh, Superior Spider-Man, if you're a fan, the, his his new story, his his uh, secret origin is kind of unnecessarily convoluted, but still very entertaining series. Great art, 
Crystal Gage is really um, making this character his own. And finally this week, IDW's new Transformers series. Um, this one I can keep short and sweet. This is a very boring book. First issue was like, um, what 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 is this? Why why are these why are the Transformers talking politics? Um, why don't we have Decepticons anymore? Where's the uh, Decepticon symbol on Megatron's chest? Second issue came in, and it's more of the same. It's just talk. It's politics. It's social commentary. It's social politics. It's you know political correctness. It's it's all the stuff that that uh, Transformers fans like me. I've been a fan since '84, since the Formers first came out, and none of this stuff interests me. Transformers is uh, an action series. It's good guys versus bad guys. It's very black and white, very simple. And you have the adventures along the way. And this is the exact opposite of what I want in a Transformers comic book. So this is going to be the last issue that I'm buying for it. Um, I always like to say something positive about books, even if I don't like them. So really, uh, outside of the uh, the lack of a uh, Decepticon symbol, I mean, the, the cover, that's a really good cover. Uh, but uh, really, there, there's nothing more I can say about this series. I'm, I'm not buying it anymore. Uh, it's to me, it was it was one of the most boring Transformer stories I've ever read. So, uh, but that's it. This is uh, this is the uh, the books that I grabbed this week, and uh, I, I think I can uh, continue doing these sort of reviews. I can try, especially if there's an interest in them. If not, I'm, I may still do them because this is actually kind of fun for me. And uh, real quickly. Also on my wall, I've got some uh, some prints and uh, yeah, some uh, good little little bits of art. Some of it signed, some of it not. Don't really care. Just buy what I like. And uh, yeah, that's it. So hopefully, uh, you know, there's something in here that'll interest you. You'll try something new. Definitely, if you have kids, the uh, in case you missed it series is a good idea. This is the second issue. The first one they featured a character called Lilith Dark, which is a really good series for if you have a little girl and you want to try to get her in her comic books. Lilith Dark, she's a little girl that goes on an adventure with uh, you know, mythical characters. Perfect for little girls. Uh, so, yeah, check these out or, or not, but uh, that's it. That's all i got to say. So we're going to wrap this up. I'll see you next time. Bye.